Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Let's go up to Loveland Ski Area in Colorado. It is a crystal clear morning up there. Temps, teens and 20s, and they continue to work on the uh, on the snowpack up there at Loveland to try to uh, get open. But you've got uh, Keystone open, you've got a basin open there. But uh, what a morning, and you can really see this on radar. I mean, there's just absolutely nothing across the West big lull in the action and that's kind of the theme with this update for a lot of the uh, the inner mountain rockies especially utah parts of southern uh, idaho parts of wyoming colorado new mexico arizona guys we are in for a long stretch of dry weather i mean eventually it looks like the pattern might break but it's going to be high and dry like this for quite a while with the storm track over time favoring the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, and the Northern Tier States. Here are my bullet points this morning. Here's what I am seeing. So high and dry, the key phrase here. Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, even parts of Montana. Then there is some uh, interesting disagreement on or after 11.6. The last few updates I've been talking about that is sort of the key turning point. It may not be the key turning point now. There's a, a bit of a drier trend in the forecast with the storm track staying to the north. Um, so we'll look at that coming up, but it definitely favors the Pacific Northwest in British Columbia, Alberta. Pacific Northwest overall looking at two or even three atmospheric river surges. Uh, 1031 to 112 is the next, and then there's probably a couple embedded within 113 to 118. Here are your best odds of snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. And I tell you, it is just, I hate to report this, but Colorado, I mean, the next best chance of snow is on 11-12. That is a long way out at this point. Um, look at Utah, a teeny tiny chance on 11-6. And then you're in a similar boat with the next best chance on 11, 11, 11, 12. So unfortunately, that's that appears as though that's the way this pattern may shake out. Let's drill down a little bit. So there's Alta, maybe an inch on 11, 6, and then 2 to 4 on 11, 11, 11, 12. Oh, man, bone dry there across a lot of Colorado uh, snow mass, maybe an inch on 11, 12. There's Jackson Hole, looking pretty good, but it's it's a waiting game until we get to that 11, 10, 11, 12. Up until then, it's very dry. Uh, there's Payette National Forest in central Idaho. There's Baker, Mount Baker, Fitzsimmons Ridge. I mean, it's looking really good. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, up into parts of British Columbia, for example, you've got 20 coming there. In, on the Fitzsimmons uh, range there, and that does include Whistler Blackcomb at the higher elevations. 1031, 111, 50 inches with that second surge, and then another six at the end. And look at Mount Hood. You've got a foot, you've got 18, there's five, there's three. Um, I wanted to include Mount Washington. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Northeast today. You've got one to two inches tomorrow on Halloween. Another inch there, and then possibly four to eight, 11, six, and then eight inches on 11.10, so things tend to be weighted towards the end of the period with a chance of some moderate to heavy snowfall there late in the period uh, in on the northeast. All right, let me show you what uh, the forecast radar is going to look like. And guys, here it is. I mean, th there's just nothing happening. We'll start this up at noontime today. So what I'll do is run this into the future until we can find something. There's dinner time. Uh, there's 6 a.m. Uh, there's the noon hour on Friday. This is uh, noon on Halloween. Look at where the action is. It's up here, Pacific Northwest, BC. Clear that, move ahead. All right, there's the dinner hour. Everything's the same. There's 6 a.m. on Saturday, November 1st. It's pretty much the same. The targeted area for best precip is up here. Parts of Oregon, Washington State, northern, extreme northern Idaho, northwest Montana, and then up into Alberta and BC. Um, there's the lunch hour. Then things start to move a little bit towards the dinner hour here. This is uh, probably 6 p.m. on uh, on the 1st of November. And you can kind of see this as a front. It's right there. So you've got a little bit of snow up there. 
northern Idaho, northwest Montana, Alberta, BC, kind of moving down through Mount Hood, and the rest of Oregon. But that's the only game in town. Um, there is, okay, now that actually, this actually is producing, let me go back to that. This is uh, about uh, 10, 11 o'clock. Rough. Well, no, that's early morning hour. That's the early morning hours on Sunday, November 2nd. This actually puts a little bit of snow with that front into central Idaho and southwest Montana. So we'll see if that actually happens. But this is this is way down the road on the 2nd of November. Let's look at the uh, middle of the atmosphere. So this is effective today. What you're looking at our atmospheric pressure anomalies up at about 18,000 feet. Again, this is today. It's all high pressure across the west. All your actions down here across the southeast and the east coast, there is uh, Melissa, the remnants of Melissa being picked up by this, uh, this dip in the jet and that trough of low pressure. Okay, this is Thursday, 11-6, so this is in a week, basically, a week from now. So this indicates a little bit of a disturbance right here, a tiny drop in pressures, larger drop back here, Pacific Northwest and uh, BC. You know, if this were to verify, I mean, again, that's very light snow. Really, we're really uh, picking at some very small things here. Um, but that's a possibility. That's a little front. Now, here's the comparison. This is 11.8. This is Saturday, 11.8. There's, and I've been showing this the last few days now, there's actually a pretty significant difference here. So there's the AI interpretation, dropping low, dropping pressures up here. There's your low pressure right there. Now on the operational, it's just the opposite. You're ridging. You've got a ridge of high pressure right here. So two totally different possibilities, we'll call it. Two different forecasts, essentially. Um, if operational, if the operational is correct, then this high and dry pattern, this big lull, will continue for quite some time. And we're not going to see anything major until probably 11.10, 11.11. For a lot of the Intermountain West. Fascinating comparison. We'll see how it plays out. We'll keep looking at that. All right, here's the uh, atmospheric river forecast. This is integrated vapor transport for the Pacific Northwest. You've got, uh, again, two or three different surges of atmospheric river moisture. There's the first one, 3112, and then two additional, maybe three additional here. You can see the different peaks. These are weak to moderate, maybe low-level strong intensity surges here into the Pacific Northwest, 11.3 through 11.8. So we definitely have some impulses lined up uh, with this type of pattern. All right, here's 10-day total precip, at least 10-day, maybe even out to 15. But I'll start this. Watch the beginning. This is all as if everything fell as rain. Look at this. The axis of heavy precip is right here through about five days. And then there's a little bit of precip that starts to move to the south uh, in the extended forecast. But boy, it takes its time. It's going to be a long, dry stretch down here for parts of Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. But up here in the Pacific Northwest, BC, look at that heavy. You're way up here uh, on the scale. I mean, you're looking at 5 to 10 inches, potentially, of liquid up there, which, of course, translates to big snow. In fact, here it is. This is the 10 to 1 snow forecast, 10 to 1 ratio. So again, through about five days, the axis puts all the heavy snow up here. But by the end of the period, watch it again, the snow starts to kind of drop to the south right there. But boy, it is small and slim pickings. So again, most of it is up here. And in the Pacific Northwest and BC, I mean, through 10, 15 days, you're easily looking at feet of accumulation. So... You know, you're probably looking at three to five feet up there in parts of the coastal range, maybe even over Rainier. All right, let me take a look at the Northeast since we talked about this. Watch the snow animation. So it comes in small waves. It doesn't all come at one time. A little bit right there, a little bit right there, a little bit more right there. Um, and then if I were to look beyond this, beyond the 10-day range, there's an additional wave that comes through. But... At least now we're starting to see some indications of snow in the northeast over the very highest peaks. This is high elevation snow. Um, and I showed you that forecast from Mount Washington a little bit ago. So this verifies that goes with that. All right, look at some snow plumes. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. 
uh, boy, has this uh, decreased. I mean, we were looking at some pretty good snow uh, three or four days ago, but now, I mean, look at this. Tiny accumulations in Jackson, and it's all after November 6th. Um, let's, look at, uh, let's look at Berthoud Pass in Colorado. Good bellwether for the state. I mean, hardly anything here, guys. Long, dry stretch, high and dry right here, and then a little bit of accumulation on or after 11.6, 11.7. But, uh, man, that is, that's even nothing to write home about. And look at Denver. It's even worse. I mean, there's nothing here. I remember when we were talking about this, and it looked like there might be some snow accumulation, maybe an inch or two around Halloween. That is not the case now. I mean, it is just high and dry. Uh, with a big area of high pressure all the way through the period. I mean, there's really not even anything there to talk about. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's kind of like I was saying, when you look at just the next five days, the axis of anything significant is up here, and it's really up here. It's really Washington State, B.C., Alberta. So, I mean, that just paints the picture for you. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.